Alright, now first let's talk about augmented reality. Now, we've all heard of this game called Pokemon Go, some of you have probably even played it. So what this game does is take into consideration real life objects and incorporates it into the game. For example, under the table you could find a Pokemon and things like that. So what you're doing is interacting with real world objects while the system generates perceptual information. Now augmented reality can be for visual, auditory, haptic or even olfactory senses. So in a way augmented reality is a treat for almost all the senses that we can feel. Next up we have virtual reality. Now with virtual reality you get a simulated environment in which you can interact. Now there are many ways that you can do this, there's virtual reality headsets, Google even has its own version called the Google Cardboard where you can use your phone to make a virtual reality headset. At number 9, we have Digital Twin. Now what Digital Twin actually is, is a digital model or a digital copy of a real life object. Now Digital Twin is used when it's not feasible for you to actually test out or analyze what you want to learn on the real life object. For example, let's take the example of a plane. Now, if you wanted to find out what certain weather conditions would do to a particular plane, you can't actually test it out on an actual real life plane. So you would create a digital twin of the plane and then perform your analytics. Now these integrate artificial intelligence, machine learning and software analytics with spatial networks. At number 8, we have edge computing. With edge computing, we are using a distributed computing system where all the computation is taking place in a layer known as the edge layer. Now this edge layer uses edge devices for the processing of data. Now this is to make sure that the cloud computing system is optimized by having most of the data processing take place in these edge devices. So first we have the cloud layer, the fog layer where some of the processing takes place and the edge layer where most of it takes place. Now, these edge devices are used in real life situations as well, for example in gas and oil rigs. Now these are offshore rigs, so it's very important that even if there's a small issue, it can have catastrophic impact. So with the help of edge devices, we are able to collect information such as temperature, humidity and things like that in real time, which can be accessed by people in a control room and determine if everything's alright. At number 7, we have cybersecurity. Now the concept of cyber security doesn't need a big introduction because of how much focus it's been on for the last few months. Now it's the practice of protecting systems, networks and programs from digital attacks. Now this is very important as it can make or break your organization. For example, if your systems are secure, you increase productivity because you're not hampered by any digital attacks. You're protected against cyber attacks and when a virus attack or a cyber attack takes place, you can be certain that there's an amount of time where your system will be down. So by being cyber secure or having good cyber security, you'll ensure that the amount of downtime is reduced. And finally, this also improves customer trust. Next, we have the Internet of Things. Now the Internet of Things involves connecting physical devices, vehicles, home appliances and other electronic products and enabling them to share information among each other or the device and the company that provides it. So most of it is aimed to improve your quality of life. Now one of the easiest examples I can think of is the smart home devices like Alexa or Google Home. Now if you say Alexa can you turn off the light? Now if Alexa is connected to a smart lamp or a smart light, it will be able to turn off that device, thus making our life easier. At number 5 we have cloud computing. Now this is a concept that probably needs no introduction. It basically uses servers that are hosted on the internet to store, manage and process your data instead of actually using your local server. So all of the data that you're using is on the cloud. Now if you feel like you want to learn this concept in a little more depth, I suggest you click on the top right corner and watch our video on what is cloud computing. It goes into these concepts in greater detail and will help you understand this a lot better. Within the cloud computing industry, there are several giants like Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud Platform. Now what these cloud service providers do are provide services which users can use to create their own applications and satisfy their requirements. At number 4, we have Autonomous Things. Now with Autonomous Things, we are bringing computers into the physical environment. But there's a catch. They don't have any human direction. They are given free reign to move around and interact with humans or other objects. 
Now, this technology uses artificial intelligence as well, where you can increase the things that you can do with hardware and software. Now, it all started with self-navigating drones, which were one of the first projects that have been taken up under AUT. Some of the upcoming projects under AUT are autonomous cars or self-driving cars, home robots and military robots. Now, as you already know, there are several companies that are already working on autonomous cars. So it's only a matter of time before we can have a truly autonomous car on the roads. And all of that is thanks to autonomous things. At number three, we have quantum computing. Now, quantum computing actually deals with computing where you use phenomena related to quantum mechanics like superposition and entanglement. Now, to give you an understanding of what we are dealing with, let me tell you the definition of a quantum. It refers to the smallest amount of anything, especially when it comes to energy or subatomic mass. That's how small of a thing we are dealing with right now. Now, a quantum computer uses quantum bits or qubits, which can be used in a superposition of state. Now, how is that useful? Yes, how? A quantum computer of n qubits can have 2 raised to n different states simultaneously. Theoretically, quantum computers can also solve problems faster than any classic computer, perhaps even faster than supercomputers. At number 2, we have blockchain. Now a blockchain is actually a list of records that is continuous in nature. Now each of these records are known as blocks and are linked to each other and are protected with the help of cryptography. Now there are certain features that are very unique to blockchain. These are 1. It's a public distributed ledger, which means that everyone in the network has access to the list of records. Secondly, it has high level encryption, that is, no false data can be added as the security levels are that high. There's also something known as proof of work where people need to solve complex mathematical problems before which they can add a block to the blockchain. And finally, people who add blocks to the blockchain are rewarded in cryptocurrency or some similar remuneration. And at the first place, we have artificial intelligence. Now, this involves creating machines that can learn, plan and solve problems like human beings. Now, AI is something that's been used in a great number of fields. Now, for example, the use for object detection, speaker recognition, solving problems related to data. And generally, this is used to help systems learn from their past experiences and use this experience to handle new data. Now, AI is of four types, which is purely reactive, where they don't have any past memory stored. So as data is given to them, they perform actions on it. Then there's limited memory, where they collect some amount of information, but they don't learn from it. Just based on the past experience, they will perform actions. Then finally, we have theory of mind and self-awareness. Now these are both almost in the same field where robots or similar devices are able to think on their own and be similar to humans.